Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Sticks and stones may break my bones but whips and chains excite me. You know work in progress. <laughs> Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have a two-in-one special today. We have one design uh, that is a specific design and then we have two offshoots of this particular design. So we have the crochet shell stitch. It's a basic hat from Yarnspirations.com. This creates a slouchy version of what we're about to do today. And what I was thinking about is after I did it I was thinking you know I really want this hat for myself but I don't want a slouchy because I like a pom-pom toque kind of hat. But then I was thinking about Daniel and he likes beanies. So what I did is that I came up with the alternative options to have the slouchy version that is the same as here and then the other two is a toque version and a beanie version just using the same pattern by just changing some information in order to make it happen. So this is the crochet cells, stel, <laughs> the crochet cell, the crochet Oh my god. She shells, he shells on the seashore. Crochet shell stitch basic blanket <laughs> and the threes a crowd crochet hats. So let's begin and we're going to be starting with our brims. So let's examine the brims and I have some examples to show you live on camera <laughs> if I could just speak today. <laughs> so here are the three different hats. We have beanie, toque, and slouchy. So you'll notice that the toque and the slouchy have a different brim than this. It's the same stitch work. It's just a different count and when you roll it down you'll notice that the brim is much wider. So you can see it's half. So what I decided to do for the um, beanie version I did not want a rolled up brim but you can decide to do what you want with any of these. So if you would prefer this size of brim without the roll for your toque you can do that and also with your slouchy. So if you prefer this to have the roll for your beanie then you can do the other one. So you can decide what you're going to do for a brim. Once the brim is then completed then the remaining of the stitch work stays the same for everybody and the only difference is is that the heights of the repeats change. So we have four inches, five and six and a half inches for the repeat and then they all close at the same time of the same stitch work in order to make that happen. So you'll use a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. We will have a stitching diagram available for you on the original sample that we're gonna be playing with and we're just gonna get ourselves started. So let's begin to do the brim first. So let's talk brim. Are you gonna do the big one or are you gonna do the smaller version? So this is chain 21. This is chain 11. So I'll demonstrate the 11 one with you. I have one already prepared to go and it's the same distance in the circle that we're going to do. It's 19 and a half inches slightly stretched but what I wanna show you is a tip right at the very beginning after we complete row number one to help you stay organized within the stitch work. So the color that you're seeing on screen I haven't said it. It's Hollywood and it's called Red Heart Roll With It Melange and it's called Hollywood and I think it's just amazing. So let's begin to start this process. So we're about to begin and let's create a slip knot. So have you decided your brim? Now is your chance to decide. So are you gonna chain 21 or are you gonna chain 11? So I'm only gonna do 11 because that's all that's needed for me. So I'm going to just chain 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Now even with the long one it will condense a bit so that's not gonna be the full height of your brim so when it's like this. So let's begin row number one and I want you to have a spare piece of yarn ready for you uh, that you're gonna use that as a stitch marker to help you identify the right and the wrong side later. So let's do row number one. To do row number one just turn over the chain and go in the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across your chain. So no matter what size brim you're doing just go all the way across and when you get there I want you to hold for me because I wanna place in that stitch marker so that I can identify the side of the brim that we're going to be working with. So please just one single crochet in the back hump of the chain going across. When you get all the way across just go right into your very last one and just hold. Do not turn your work yet. This is the right side of the project and it, it tells us later to be paying attention to the right and the wrong side on the brim. So if you don't place a stitch marker now it's harder to tell. And so what I want you to do is just stick your hook behind one of the strands that are on the right side here and what you're going to do is put in a stitch marker behind that strand. So just grab a piece of yarn and if you're confident that's not gonna follow just pull it through 
so that it is just holding inside that. So what I want to do is that every time I can see the strand on the front, this is the right side and if there is no strand, that's the wrong side. This will help us identify this. So now let's move on to row number two all the way to nine and a half, 19 and a half inches slightly stretched. So let's put our hook back on and now let's, let's officially turn. So what I need you to do is just to go back and forth on the rows on the back loop only. So just chain up one and in stitch work if you're new to crochet, both of the strands equals a stitch when you go into it. If you go into the strand that's closest to you, that is the front loop, the strand jumping down through the middle and picking the other strand up that's furthest from you, that is the back loop. So what I want you to do starting in the very first stitch is to go into the back loop of every stitch across. And so once you understand how this is doing, it's creating a ribbing. This is what creates somewhat of an elastic uh, feel to your brim and you're just gonna go back and forth on doing this until you get to 19 and a half inches slightly stretched. And the reason why I keep emphasizing slightly stretched other than just saying the words is that if you do it 19 and a half inches and it's not stretched, the hat circumference will stretch out even further. So you want that stretch right in from the very beginning. So once you're at the very end, you'll turn, chain up one and go in the back loop only and go back and forth and it's creating what is called as ribbing. And so what I need you to do is just go back and forth until you get to the 19 and a half inches and I'm gonna pick you up in just a moment and I will show you what it's gonna look like at that point and then what to do next. So just put your hook in the wind. It shouldn't take you too long, maybe a half hour and then you'll be meeting me back here. So put me on pause and I'll see you back here in a few moments. So with the magic of this, I prepared this in front of TV last night. So what I wanna do is just measure right from the beginning and see if I got 19 and a half inches done. So non-stretched, it's about 18 inches and so slightly stretched, I can get to my 19 and a half. So if you leave it and go right to 19 and a half without stretching, that will stretch even more. So this is what you want it to do when it comes to forming the um, shape of your head. So now we're going to move on and we're now going to seal the deal, make this into a full brim and then we're gonna do the first round of it just to get ourselves set up and then we'll start doing the repeat fun work after that. Before I move on, I wanna tell you one more thing. The stitch marker here is the right side of the work. We already know that. So when I go to finish and I think it's 19 and a half inches slightly stretched, I need to make sure that this is finishing on the right side. So it's finishing passing the row and it's still on the right side before turning the work to go on the wrong side. So make sure that's where you are. So if your stitch marker is upside down when you're doing this and you're not in this position up here, this means that you're on the wrong side. So make sure you finish on the right side and you're ready to go. Let's now begin and let's put this together. So before I zoom in, what we need to do is we need to fold this in half so the wrong sides are facing each other. So this is the right side of the work we can tell. So what I want you to do is just pick up the middle and pull up and that's the wrong sides facing each other on the inside here. And therefore that's where we're gonna go. So the wrong side should be on the inside of the brim which it currently is. And you can tell that because this is still the right side which is a good side. Let's go across and let's finish this going across. So I'm going to demo this in two ways. One way will be how Yarnspirations wrote it on their pattern and how I wrote it on mine. Mine's different. So Yarnspirations is asking you to go into the front panel like this into the single crochet in the front panel and directly through to the single crochet on the other panel behind. Then yarn over pull through and then single crochet. So come to the next one and the next one on this side. So putting them both together and the reason why I changed it on mine and this is an option that you can decide for yourself even for even if you're doing the Yarnspirations version is that this creates uh, a lump on the on the outside of the of the hat. So when you open it up you can clearly see that it's standing off. So what I would recommend to you is that let's change our approach on that. Here's what I did to get mine to be flat. 
on the front stitch on the front one just go into the back loop only you already know how to do that and then on the other one come into the front loop only. And what this is going to do is going to sink it down in between the stitches. So I want you to slip stitch. So yarn over through and through and it will sit flat. So the back loop on the front one, the front loop on the next one. And pull through and through. And I'm slip stitching it all the way. So whether you decide to do a single crochet or slipping it like this, you, you'll win either way. But this way will be much flatter in the appearance. It will be very hard to tell what is the stop and the start of your brim as far as the rotation going around. So you're just gonna follow this all the way across and for the longer brims of course you have more stitches to do and the shorter ones obviously much shorter. And when you get to the very last one which is not this one but the next one. So you just back loop and the front loop and this is where you're going to stop and when you pull it see it's flat. So it's a neat way to do it and we're going to continue and I wanna show you another cheating technique but pick this up and lay the flat, lay it flat with the hook on the one side and I'll show you why. So I'm about to show you not a cheating technique but a smart technique and so the next round before we start all the fun stuff is that we have to evenly space 72 single crochets around the top of this brim. So we're just gonna follow this around and get 72. The problem is, is if you do a guess, you can get all the way to 72 and you still have more done or you can get to 60 and you still have more to go. So the best way to do it is to fold it directly in half and get a spare piece of yarn and just at the halfway mark where you think it is, just place in a stitch marker. And my goal is, is that instead of going 72, I'm still gonna do 72 but because what is half of 72 it's 36. So what I wanna do is that I want to go around this and I wanna be at the 36 mark by that point. This will help me space out the one side and then I need 36 on the other. This pattern works in sets of six. So if you think that you wanna change the size of this hat, all you just gotta do is a multiple of six. So 72 is a multiple of six. So you could have 78 or you could have, um, what would be the other one, 66 I think it could be. I think that's right. And so you can have a multiple six as long as it's a six it'll always work out for you. So let's begin to do our first round and this will help us to get started and let's grab our yarn and play. So now it's just guesswork. Do not chain one to start this. We wanna keep it nice and flat and we wanna just start somewhere. So just place your hook in the top of the side and count that as one. So I'll do the first half with you. So I wanna go from one to 36 by the time I hit that stitch marker and then one to 36 by the time I get back to this point. So I'm just gonna roughly guess where I think the stitches should go. So we're gonna just say two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, I'm just gonna stop here for a sec. So I'm at 26, so uh, 26 and I need to get to 36. So I need to have 10 stitches by the time I get here, right here. So what I wanna just make sure is that I get that in. So 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 goes in. So even if you have to put some closer together, it will balance itself out. So don't need to worry about that. Now that I'm at the stitch marker, 
I wanna do now one to 36 again and it will take me back to the very beginning and I'm gonna leave that in your hands to do that. So it, it's a nice idea just in case you're moving too quickly you just have to pull back to the stitch marker and know that that's the, where you ended. So you just start with the next stitch and keep on going. So instead of frogging the whole round you can just do a section. So that's why I do it like that. So count one to 36 again and I'll meet you at the end of this round. I'm currently at 34 just coming around 35 and finally 36 and I wanna slip stitch it to the very beginning single crochet that I started with. And what I'd highly recommend to you is that just count the number of stitches in the round. It should be either 72 and if you changed it and it's a multiple of six it should still be a multiple of six. So make sure you do that and then we're now going to progress back into the pattern now for body of the hat for the first round. So the body of the hat first round is gonna get our pattern established and then rounds number two and three are going to be then the, the building of the hat. So I need you to chain up one and in the same one that you did the join, single crochet. Skip two stitches and put five double crochets in the third chain away or the third stitch away sorry. So one, two, three, four and five. Once the five are in skip two and single crochet into the next. And you're going to do that all the way around. So skip two and go to the third and put five double crochet in. So one, two, three, four and five. Skip two, single crochet into the next. Skip two and put five double crochet in the next. So I need you to do this all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the round in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around. I'm gonna give you some more advice. So the last section to go in here is the five double crochet and you should be able to skip two stitches which I can. So skipping two and you're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. Based on my own experience what I'd recommend to you is just take a look at the entire brim of the hat. Make sure that you can see these single crochets in between all of the, the fans that you see or, or the shell work that you see and that will let you know that everything's positioned properly because now rounds number two and three just work based on that being established. Let's start row number two or round number two. So round number two we're going to make the shell work but the shells are gonna fall in between the existing shells here. So how we start round number two is that we chain up three. That's your first double crochet and you're going to put only two more double crochets in the same stitch as the join. The other two double crochets will go in at the very end of the round you know, for that particular one. So now you're going to skip to the middle double crochet of the next shell coming up so you skip over these two double crochets. Just go to the middle single crochet and then reach to the next single crochet that's between the shell and that will have five double crochets in it. So everything's being positioned in between. So we have two, three, four and five. And then at the top of this one it's the middle one double crochet, single crochet and then shell into the next single crochet that's available to you. And so what I'll do is that I'll meet you at the end of this round. This is round number two and you'll be repeating this several times before you get to the top of the hat and this is where I'm gonna meet you up in a moment. So I'll meet you at the end of this round. Just place in your shells and your single crochets. So I'm coming up to the end of number two and you can see that the shell is partially done. Right where this is coming out of is where I need you to aim. So after the last single crochet is in place in the two leftover double crochets into the same spot that that's coming out of so it aligns properly. You'll notice that the coloring with this will be slightly off when it joins but you have to trust me it really does work out. So just slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and because this color carries on this blends. So even though it's not blending at the moment it will blend. And let's begin round number three. In round number three you're going to chain up one and you were going to single crochet into the same stitch at the top and this is considered the middle of the shell. The next shell is in the next single crochet so it's gonna fall in between and gonna align directly with the one two rows below. So you have your five double crochets going in there. 
So everything's puzzling together quite nicely. So once that's done is that you single crochet in the middle of the next grouping and then come into the next single crochet. So it's exactly what you know. It's just the difference of round number two and three has a different starting point and that's so important to know when it comes to doing the repeat in the future. So let's go all the way around on round number three and let's talk repeats because this is where you have to decide whether you're doing a beanie, a toque, or a slouchy. So I'm coming up to the end of number three. This is the last shell here. I started here so I just wanna join it here. So let's talk repeat because now you've got rounds number two and three under your belt and you'll see how everything will puzzle together but we have to be very strategic from this point to get the size you need. So at this point you need to repeat your rounds. So you need to repeat rounds two and three. You keep repeating that over and over and over but the last round that you complete has to be round number two. So if for example I just keep going uh, two, three, two, three, two, three, the last round has to be a two. And the reason for it is that sh shaping the top of the hat requires you to finish on a round two so that everything will stay lined up with each other. So for the beanie size you will go from this part right here to four inches tall. For the toque you'll go to five inches and for the slouchy you go to six and a half inches and that's where you're gonna meet me back up here in a moment. I'm just gonna do a beanie size cause that's all that's needed and then the shaping of the top of the hat is the same for everybody. So decide what you wanna do. Just make sure you keep repeating your rounds number two and three and make sure that you do finish on a second round and then we'll start shaping the top in a moment. So I'll see you back here in a few minutes but I have some homework to do before we get there. Okay so I'm back. I'm sorry you can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> so what we have is that I've gone four inches. The row around number two has to be your last round. Okay so when you go to start the next one you'll chain up one and you'll do a single crochet into the top of that, that one there. So make sure that's where you are. So you could have five inches. You could also have six and a half depending on the size that you're doing. So let's begin shaping the top as we make our way around and we'll now have four rounds to go in order to get to the very top and let's begin that process next. So let's begin. You're going to chain one and you'll place in a single crochet in the top of the first one. You've done that before and what's changing now instead of going uh, the five um, double crochets into the next single you're only gonna place three. So we have one, two and three. Whoops, it'd be helping if I actually did it right. So then once you have three done you come to the middle one of the next group and single crochet. So you already know what to do. The difference is is that you're only going to put in three. Now uh, I'll just speak firsthand for myself is that once I, once you do this and you put in your fives it's easy to, to kind of like lose your concentration and put five in accidentally. So just make sure that you are only putting in three. It makes a difference because you need the, the top to collapse. So place in three double crochets to form your shell and I keep dropping my stitches and then one single crochet in the top of the next shell. Please do that all the way around. This is shaping the top the first round. So I'm getting around on the first round. I got my three double crochets in here. Remember we started with the single. So you'll just join with the single crochet and that was the first round of shaping in the top. Let's begin round number two. In round number two we're going to start off with the chaining of three. That's your first double crochet. And then you'll double crochet into the same one as the join. Now we're still only doing three into the same one but we'll finish that one when we come back around. You'll single crochet in the top of the middle one of the grouping of three and then you'll jump to the next single crochet and only put in three double crochet. So one, two and three and then one single crochet in the middle one of the group of the next three. Please do this all the way around for round number two. So I'm coming up to the end of the second round. I'm putting my three double crochets in, single crochet in the group of the next one and then the last one we only have two in there instead of three so we just gotta make sure we go into the same spot and place in the final double crochet before joining it to the top of the chain three. So let's begin the third round next. Third round is another massive reduction so right where you're sitting just chain up one and place one single crochet in the top of that middle one where you're sitting. Then in the next single crochet place in a half double crochet. In the middle of the next grouping of three single crochet. In the single crochet that's separating them half double crochet and you'll do that all the way around. 
please do this for round number three. So I'm coming around on the third round and I'm putting in my half double crochet in the single and right where we started with this single crochet in the top of the middle. So you wanna just join it. And we're gonna finally do then the last round. So the last round, round number four. In the last round in number four, you're just going to chain up one and you will apply one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Nice and simple and this is helping to fill it in and then I'll be back in a moment as we'll conclude the top of the hat together. So I'm coming all the way back around to where I had started and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. So what I need to do is that we need to fasten this off so just take this as a longer tail and we need a tapestry needle to finish this off. You'll notice that there's a big hole in the top. We're gonna bring that to a conclusion and bring it all together nice and tight. So put this onto a tapestry needle. Now I want you to trace around the outside. I jump every two stitches. So just in and out about every two and I will pull it shut once I have it all the way around. So I just pull enough just to get rid of the the extra yarn so it's not in my way and then continue just to weave it in and out back to the beginning of where I started. And once I'm back to where I had started I can then pull that yarn and everything will pull shut. Okay. What I like to do to secure is that I like to jump across from where I'm sitting. I like to go directly across right over and then I like to go the other direction across. And I don't wanna stay on the outside for very long, just enough to cross over and then stick the needle down through the middle and use your hand in behind. Just sit, carefully do that and pull that strand through. Once it's through, make sure it ties itself into a knot on the other side. And then what I like to do because it, even though it's for me um, I still wanna just take some, some of the yarn and just weave it through. So I'm not touching the outside of this. I'm only just staying on the fibers on the inside of the hat when I do that. And it's just enough just to kinda hold that loose end in and it should be good to go. So any other tails that you will have you will want to secure off. So just don't start hacking away. So I have this one here. This is where I started if you recall. And I wanna take this and I wanna favor the inside of the hat. So take that strand, it's the beginning strand of the brim and just weave it through. And when you pull on it, don't pull on it so that you change the shape. You wanna be intentional but you don't wanna be to the point where it's gonna change the way that the brim looks. So on the first pull through just make sure it's looking pretty even. Go back down in the same direction from what you just came and then back up. And it's better if you can get yourself to go in between some fibers, not just in between the, the, st uh, the, st the strands. And so any loose ends that you'll wanna do, you wanna get rid of it. You wanna get rid of any stitch markers that you have and then you have your hat done and ready to go. So these particular hats can change colors on their own with the melange and it's really quite fun and fabulous. So there's the seam line there. It's almost hardly noticeable and because it looks like it's part of the ribbing and it's really a great day today. So this is the Threes of Crowd hats. It's also the basic of uh, the shell stitch basic hat and this is another free pattern available for you. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.